Yeah, folks, Quill18 here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a bonus Tuesday stream. Don't usually stream on Tuesday, but excited to be playing a bunch of Millennia this week. Version, the release version of Millennia just hit, so it's now available on the Steams. Technically, I'm not playing on the release version. Um, I tried my... Thanks, Rorum! Also, the last time we got a pizza, it got delivered to the wrong door. We're gonna be sure to check both this time around. Don't know why they did that. It was really weird. Got like sort of an extra side door that's like half covered in overgrown plants. Someone decided to deliver the pizza there. It was really odd. Thank you, Rorum, and thank you for the contribution to the uh, the whiskey and chocolate fund earlier. Or I guess it's the money for essential fund now. I, I might go back to calling it the whiskey and chocolate fund though, because it was kind of entertaining. Um. Release version, yes. So um, when I switched from the, the pre-release build, the influencer build that I was running, to the release version, Steam does like a 0 0.001 second update of the game. Um, so as far as I can tell, there's no difference in two. I loaded up a game, I played around for a little bit. Everything seems to be identical. However, it did change the version number, and as a result, I wasn't able to load my save from yesterday. Um, so I decided to just roll back to the pre-release version. As again, as far as I can tell, there's no difference whatsoever, so that we could continue our save from yesterday. Everything is still hazy red because we are still currently in an age of blood, although I believe we are probably fairly soon going to be moving it out. We've got two out of three researchers in here to move on to the Age of King. I know my head covers this, but I think that's like the only thing, I mean, and the mini map, but who cares about that? Um, that covers that up. I had to have a request from someone to see if we could do UI scaling. As far as I can tell, there's no interface scaling option, unfortunately. I mean, I guess I could play the game in a lower resolution and then upscale it or something, but I don't think I can make that switch now and I don't even know how well everything would fit, but it'd be a little bit big. So we're gonna have to go with the scale that it is here, uh, which I know is particularly annoying for people who are maybe watching on phones, for example, uh, it might be a little bit small. In terms of sitting on the computer, the UI feels great, feels really good. <laughs> the age of blood, sweat, and tea? I like the blood, sweat, and tea, grumpy oldie. I don't know if that was a typo, but I kind of love it. And can we can we keep that being a thing over here? <laughs> Time to build a blood library. Well, we are starting to build blood walls. I think in New York. Oh no, no. We went straight for the we went straight for the, the skull towers over here. But we will be building the bloodstone walls afterwards, I think. Just because we can. So for those of you who don't know. In millennia, you do progress through different ages, and normally it goes stone, bronze, iron, but you can have alternate ages depending on how things go. Um, and we may have gone on a slight killing spree, uh, mostly because we took advantage of the absolutely OP Raiders National Spirit, which I'm sure is gonna get a hard nerf soon. So get your kicks in now. Um, and anyway, that ended up triggering an Age of Blood, where now the entire world's at war, which A, doesn't bother us too much because we were going to go on a Raffle Stomp spree regardless. And the other continents, so like we've basically, we've taken a look at most of our continent. As far as I know, we've kicked everyone off of our current continent. There's a, there's a neutral town hiding somewhere over here, and there's still some barbarians around, but I suspect we've beat up all the players and knocked them off. There's another continent somewhere else, but those guys are probably stuck in a war because of the Age of Blood. You're welcome, world. Hey, Essentia, or hey, uh, Kiss for Luck. Hey, Raiders from her channel. Hope you guys had a hoot today. I'm assuming you were playing ESO. Wasn't able to catch it because I was busy doing some other things. Yeah, filthy neutrals, exactly. You never know where they stand. So we're gonna have to go and wipe them out, clearly. So that's the plan here. Things are going, things are going very well. Again, we're not playing on the hardest difficulty. We want to make sure we could progress and not just like, like booped early or something, because that would be awkward. I just noticed this button. Build helper. Buildings improvement that generate food. Buildings generate housing. Sanitation. Oh my God. Now this is filtering to just the things we have unlocked. Can I, and I can set reminders from here too? Holy crap. So let's say we're looking at New York here. And we're like, oh, you know what? New York needs more food. What, what, I, what I can do to get more food going on? So the food tab over here, we can look at everything. Because there's two buildings that are available. We've already built the food stockpile. It looks like I can build the granary. 
Ha! And then, yeah, we've got improvements over here. And these are all the goods that, that count as food. So if you produce wheat, it count, each wheat counts as three food. You can also, you can convert the wheat into flour, which is then worth six food. You can convert the flour into bread, which is then worth 10 food. And then we can see the buildings that actually contribute to this in some way or another. Like if we can look at the farm over here, we can see it produces wheat. The pasture has got this symbol for the wool as well, because it produces meat, which is a food thing. And I guess it's showing, oh, and by the way, you'll also get wool. I never noticed this button before. That's really handy. Yeah, like let's say we start to get a, um, uh, I was going to say a need for religion, but we actually don't have that mechanic locked out, unlocked yet, so it would probably show up in there too. Ah, oh, that's swell. Da -na 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 -na. All right, there was neutral in Northwind in the last stream. The fog, yeah, barely visible. Exactly. We we're just we we're just peeking at that corner a second ago. And Shira says, New York needs food. You might need to invent cannibalism. It's free food. Whoa! I expected that sentence to end with something like bagels or pizza or something. I didn't realize you'd go full Rimworld on us there, Shira. Uh, no, no. Can you convert the bread into sandwiches for even more food? That would be great. Like, where's our hamburgers option, right? If we have meat and we have bread, come on. Um, yeah, we currently only have two cities we're managing directly, these two regions, New York uh, in the south of our empire. In fact, right on the southern tip of our continent, basically. We've got one vassal slightly further south, but we've got New York here. We uh, also went and integrated Belfast, which is northwest of New York and currently on our western border, although I suspect what we're going to be doing is dropping some cities over here with some settlers uh, to expand space and just more or less to, I mean, We'll, we'll make use of it in their production, but a lot of it is just going to be denying land from barbarians to spawn, which is going to help us control things. And my plan had been to probably integrate Nicomedia over here, which has got a lot of space around it. It's actually very central on the continent. And then we'll probably want to do something kind of in the north. It could be Umungandlovu here, which I'd probably rename because I can't really say it very well. Um, but Topeka is also a good pick. It's sort of a northernmost pick. Um, and, and then we might integrate more and more and more because the more cities we integrate, like I can't control the vassal, right? Like Nukemedia is just doing its own thing. It's building its own buildings. It's doing its own improvements. We could probably do it more efficiently because A, we're a human player and have better brains in theory. But more importantly, we can pool the resources, right? Like the improvement points that we're generating sort of globally throughout our empire, we could go and apply that to rapidly help develop Nukemedia. Uh, so... Um, you know, the more things you integrate, the better, although it also means more micromanagement, but, but, more, but the big thing is that we are going to be limited in our points. We, first of all, we have to wait for this integration meter to fill up, which is different from prosperity. These are two different mechanics. So sometimes some people weren't entirely clear on that because admittedly they're right next to each other. Um, once this fills up, we can then spend a government XP to integrate it. We could do Megara now because it's got a full bar because we've had it for a while and um, we haven't figured out what determines the cost here. Yeah, because um, the cost... Actually, I don't know if it's the cost integrate. The cost integrate may be the same. The integration meter seems to be... Seems to require more, perhaps for distance. Like, it's actually quite interesting. Megara here needs 20. Alexandra here needs 50. Maybe it just has to do with the order that the vassals were created in. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know what what determines the integration amount required. It is worth noting, though, that in addition to costing government points, um, having more regions also increases cultural upkeep. So the amount of culture we're producing per turn is being reduced by how many regions we've got. And going from a cost of three to I think it was saying a cost of seven, that's a pretty big difference and is going to radically slow down our cultural production. So there's a lot of th reasons to not go in integration on mass. It's a balancing act that you want to do. I am noticing over here. Um, this, I think, may have been a town. Can I go and click ruin? Re oh, no, this was this is the town. Oh, this is a probably a dwelling. I think it's probably worth using our engineering power here to rebuild this town. Although, if barbarians come over here again and burn it down, I'll be kind of annoyed, but we'll see. That's also true. Megara was a neutral site. Alexandra was a player. So one thing that'll be interesting, over in the north, right over here, this neutral town, when we go and boop it momentarily, what is going to be the integration requirement for that? Again, not integration cost, but how much does the integration meter need to fill? Pittsburgh was one we founded, so maybe that's why it's only 15. Megara is one we conquered. 
but it was a neutral, so maybe it needs 20. And all of these were player ones. You might have picked it up. You might have picked it up. I knew there was a reason I keep you people around. I mean, it's not for the jokes. Um. Just clean up this barbarian with this unit. Terra Invicta landed on Game Pass. Saw so you played it a year ago. We played again. I want to. So Terra Invicta is the one that's like, it feels like a grand strategy XCOM game, right? Am I thinking of the right game? And I played it in early access and it was still a little rough. I do want to revisit that. We're good on wealth. I'm going to take the culture. That's three turns worth of culture right now. So that's pretty nice. And... Okay, we do have a unit moving vaguely towards the neutral stuff. Although this guy's going to have to boop this barbarian first. Just keep this cleaned up. I do hope there's going to be an option in the options that makes it so that we can... Like, the, the combat page just doesn't come up. The only thing I can see for it is the um, is this autoplay. But that just plays the animation. It still opens the dialog box if that's not there. If there is something else that people have figured out, you let me know. You keep this around for totally accurate and objective facts, right? Yes, that is the reason. Right, you were pulling back over here because we had nothing to boop, and I thought, ah, we'll make sure to just guard Umung over here, but let's go and boop this barbarian. Some nice landscape around here. Uh, I think we had gone over here to bar boot barbarians. There's none anymore. I don't see squint mode is engaged. I don't see a barbarian encampment anywhere in this area. So I'll move this towards the fog. But I might afterwards just sort of sit it around here just to keep an eye out for possible threats. Oh, how is unrest? Uh, so if, if the unrest... So currently it's at zero at both these cities. If the unrest grows here, at some point you will get a, like... Um, a threat could start brewing. There'll be a little icon that shows up here or here somewhere, and it'll also show up on the sidebar. If you don't see a little square over here, your unrest is probably fine. So yeah, currently is good. Just nice, because that can be something... Let me tell you, in my practice games, unrest, that is a run killer. The other thing that can be a run killer is the chaos meter filling up and getting a chaos event and not having money to buy it off. Those can be run killers. Definitely prioritize keeping an eye on those things. And it's easy for the unrest to catch you off guard because you might have a defensive unit in the city and then you see a barbarian encampment. So you're like, oh, I'm just going to move it out here and deal with it. Well, those defensive units generate a lot of negative unrest. You know, they could be killing like 20 points worth of unrest, maybe more. So suddenly you move it out of the city and now your city is generating like, yeah, maybe like 20 points of unrest per turn. And it just takes a couple of turns for that to become bad enough to trigger an event. So it can really sneak up on you. might do is I think I'm going to send one of these units to go and join that army and then this pair I might just have it sit in Belfast keep this safe hmm so oh yes we have our scout here that we put on a boat to get to this little disconnected piece of land and that is all there is well let's go and put you back on a boat we can move you around somewhere else we might even go and decide to visit the other continent with it we saw a barbarian. Let's move around here. No, no barbarian encampment over there. All right. <laughs> Which is amazing having no units to defend the populist riots. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, obviously this is the way the counter unrest, but it turns out, you know, <laughs> if you only rely on military police, sometimes the population might be sometimes a little cranky in other situations. All right, we'll boop that. And yeah, we're looking for Nanjing. I got my reminder here for dwellings. These reminder system is great. Where was I looking to build it? Belfast doesn't have a housing need yet. New York does. So I was going to build more um, more dwellings over here for more housing. So let's do that. I'm going to put it on the scrublands. The scrublands I don't do anything with other than maybe hunting. And that doesn't seem like a priority right now. So I'm going to drop that there. There we go. Our housing need is now 200% met. So actually... Much more than that. We're at 11 of 4. Because only the population above 5, I think, needed housing. That makes sense, right? 9 minus 5 is 4. Yeah. So now now we're good until the city grows. Uh, um, well, actually, as soon as it grows twice more, we won't be at 200% housing anymore. But still, we're in pretty good shape. New York's going to keep growing very quickly with this, which is nice. We could use a little bit more food, but I think that's okay. New York, are you working any unimproved tiles? 
No. Hey, Quill, pay attention. All the tiles you're working are improved. Great. Hey, Pulitz, thanks for the sub. One thing I would love to see is if on this screen you had the ability to, like, upgrade or, um, or even destroy buildings when you're trying to switch things around. Because in the late game, your cities do get quite big and sprawling, and it can be hard to necessarily spot the thing you're looking for. Or maybe that's just me. Now, you can work uh, these dwellings. Working on it just gives you one wealth, so it's really not worth doing. I, I want to see zero people in the dwellings over here because it's not tremendous value. The later tier buildings do give you more and more and more, which is nice. I think we're probably good to move on. Any um, exploration power I want to use? I got to say, like, we were, I was having a good discussion in Discord today. Like, what are the differences between this and Civ? And then the answer is many, right? Other than the fact that it's a turn-based 4X civilization building game, um, virtually every mechanic in this game is different. Uh, I mean, science, I guess, is pretty straightforward. You generate a certain amount of science to unlock a tech, although it's not a tech tree. It's divided by ages, and you got the ability to skip techs or go back and backfill them later if you want, um, which is which is very different. Um, but other than that, like, the way your cities grow is not by, like, filling up a food meter, right? It's filling up a needs meter, basically, which, sure, starts off as just food, but rapidly stops being that. The combat mechanics are completely different. And the big thing is all these domains and all these powers. You have so many levers and buttons that you can push on any given turn. Um, it, it feels very different than a Civ, where basically, in Civ, basically nothing happens instantaneously, right? Neither one is better or worse. Will having an age of battle, I'm shocked. Listen, Incognito, I don't know what you're talking about. How rude to even suggest that my benevolent rule may not be making everyone perfectly happy. I Oh, there we go. Well, I may as well rush this one for 37 bucks, which ain't much. Granary completes, fills our food need, which is good. I think what I'd like to do here... Oh, we could get our, our walls and things. But I was wondering about the Civic Monument, just to get more influence so we can start pushing out the borders in Belfast a little bit. Because there's not a lot of, like, tiles that can be working right now. We can check its expansion. Yeah, it's pretty far away from any expansion right now. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go and build a civic monument, um, which is... Previously, we built a dolmen to expand borders. The civic monument is the level 2 version of that. And there would be a little green arrow here if we had already a dolmen. This would be just the upgrade, the replacement for it. But this is a flat-out build. I think this is a good thing for us to build. I know, I want the Skull Towers. Again, we're building one in New York, so that's good. Um, but I want the Skull Towers and Blood Walls everywhere just because it sounds awesome. But I think building this Civic Monument to push out our borders is actually a pretty good idea. So we'll start with that. That's going to be fine. Oh, I wonder. Now, we could use this domain power here to integrate Vassal. Use it on friendly territory to boost its integration process. It's plus five Vassal integration. I think this is a one-shot. So with Nicomedia here, I think it would bring us from 28 to 33 integration. So I don't think this is a huge deal. I have to say the merchants are pretty nice though, because a merchant increases the prosperity of a vassal. Um, it will max it out, and then I think it'll it'll spit the merchant back out again, so you can use it more. Um, right now, all of our vassals, their prosperity is going up 5% per turn, because we did pick this idea um, in Kingdom, the install Satrap ability, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to boost that faster because the prosperity of a vassal determines the resources it provides for us. So this number over here is getting scaled based on prosperity. I think it's worth us putting out at least one merchant here and just trying to bring all the vassals up to the capacity as much as possible. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'll just pop it out in Wilmington over here. And then we'll just move you to be next to Pittsburgh. And now we have a button here, deploy, and we get a little symbol here. And what should happen is this prosperity should go up very quickly. And then when it maxes out, I think it's going to spit out the merchant and we'll be able to move it somewhere else. We may actually want multiple merchants, um, but A, I can't afford it right now. And B, we do still have pr passive prosperity growth. So it may be less important with the kingdom build than others. The border's not growing in this game. Swift, they do grow, but they grow based on... Um, what is it called? I already forgot. Influence. So influence is a stat that grows borders. And we can actually hit this mode and see it grow. And it has already. New York has already expanded the borders. And we've got buildings that build it, that expand it as well. Um, they don't grow as fast. Without without having built these extra buildings, they don't grow as fast as, um, as you might see in Civ, for example. But in Belfast over here, we are building this civic monument. So we get more influence, including a one-time 
uh, border expansion, like a one-time boost of 100 uh, influence, which should expand uh, Belfast borders quite a bit. It should, it'll probably do a whole ring. <laughs> oh, you can spawn the merchants in the vassal's territory? Oh, that saves time. Okay. So we filled our innovation bar. Now, the first thing I usually do when I see this is how much money can I get in, in, out of the innovation? Because if we get a chaos event that we want to avoid, and we tend to want to avoid most of them, it'll probably cost us about the same amount. As is, I've got 1500 bucks in the bank, so I'm not worried too much about the money right now. Let's see what the reward here. So innovation, bend the knee. I don't know if this is because we're a kingdom or if it's because we're in the Age of Blood. I suspect it's these are Age of Blood events. All other nations must surrender to the might of the Kingdom of the United States. The Kingdom's armies enact its will. I accept. Okay, this just gives us an attack boost against militia units. This would be fine if we were still going around stomping on major cities because we get a huge advantage to attacking their, their built-in city defenders, the militia. As is, there ain't no one left for us to attack right now. So I'm just going to take the money, even though I don't need it right now, but it'll give us a lot more flexibility. We might just be able to just rush more buildings or something like that, since we do have such a big pool. Like in Belfast, so it was a thousand bucks for us to rush the building. Now it's gone down a little bit. Yeah, maybe not quite yet. We could accelerate the Skull Tower. That's not bad. The other thing we can do is, oh, maybe we don't have that trait of being able to accelerate the culture purchase. I think there's a tech that gives us the ability to rush finish um, the culture. Is it this one? Yeah, there it is. If we backfill officials, we can then use money to finish uh, the culture a little bit faster. So that's something we could consider as a, as a tech soon. We'll see. Probably I'm gonna go in the Age of Iron next, but we'll see. So meanwhile, we have our scoot on a boot. I'm just gonna send him across the, oh, I can't enter deep ocean yet. Never mind. All right, well, we'll just scout around here and see what's on our coast then. Mm hmm. Fish sticks, we're building our first skull tower. Oh, a goodie hut. I don't think I need diplomacy XP right now. I could get another merchant. But I think we want the government XP. I can't remember. I think there's more stuff for us to unlock in Kingdom. Also, government XP is how we get settlers. So I think we'll get that. So with our Kingdom. I could get the discounted Envoy. I don't know how much I care about it. Reap Scudage, I don't think I care about this too much. I think if I'm going to use a power to on one of my vassals, I'm probably going to want to spend that this one for knowledge. And there's probably a limit to how much spare government power we need. Uh, I will want to go and do the Kingdom Reformed over here because, you know, Homeland generating more culture is great. The innovation boost is nice. Um, and then we could, this will set us up for a peaceful revolution later on. In fact, I'll control click to get a reminder we can get there. We do have enough for a settler. We haven't used this very much. I think we've only spawned one settler all game. I think we should do that. If I spawn the scent... Oh, I don't know if I can spawn it in a, a vassal. But I was going to say, we can group it up with the army in a Sozu over here. And just start to fill in gaps. Like, this is actually pretty good space early on. And then somewhere over here to get all the fish. There'll be lots of tundra, but I kind of still want a presence here just to stop barbarian encampments from do that. No, you're right. I currently don't make Diplomacy XP. I mean, literally make zero Diplomacy XP currently. So getting the injection might be nice for these, or we'll just start building some buildings that do this. It'll depend. It'll probably depend on what kind of national idea we get in the next era and whether or not I care about that. I'm going to go for a settler. Can I spawn it here? No. It's going to go there. Um, I'll leave the crossbow. Ooh, can't quite reach. And let's get a settler. I think we're going to be fine. Is there a way to peacefully assimilate neutral cities like Diplomacy XP? Actually, one thing I'm not sure of, like... Yeah, if you spawn Envoy, you can vassalize minor nations. For some reason, I've never done this. That reason is I have more pointy sticks than everyone else. But it's definitely something we're going to have to try. We'll have to try an actual pacifist run to see what that's like. Plus, I mean, if nothing else, we could do a self-imposed no raiders allowed build. All right, so you have cleared out this area. Everything's looking okay. I guess we can just go and spot on the other side. There we go. Just to say. And you know what? I kind of want to boop this barbarian encampment before I move south again. I don't want the spawning stuff that's annoying my cities or anything like that. Rip that apart. I don't need 60 wealth, so we'll take the diplomacy XP. Let's run parody pacifist. I mean, I have no enemies anymore. That's how pacifism works, right? 
Oh my god. Okay, well, I'm happy this barbarian wasn't here last turn. All right, just run and join there. Thank you very much. Hello, barbarian. We can actually plant a city right over here. We clear out this barbarian. I guess I'll do the thing where I start walking back over here again. <laughs> so, we're going to see if the integration requirement for Nanjing is 20, based on our theory of the cost. So we're going to vassalize you. It is 20. There you go. 15 for friendlies, 20s for neutrals, 50 for enemy territory. At least on normal speed. Wait, there's no speed controls for this. There's just size. Yeah, so I don't know. Oh, oh my god. There's something undiscovered still. We can send our scoot over here. We have cultural power available now. Let's see. I mean, local reforms continues to be good, but I think we should probably be in the mode to maybe pop down some more cities. Although New York's going okay. If anything, I might want to expand in this direction and... Or, sorry, towns, not cities. I could put down a town here to expand there. And then everything around that town is almost certainly going to be improved at some point, and then that'll give us some extra money. We're going to want to mine those things. That's not bad. Yeah, I don't hate that. I mean, I could also put it here, just so that it can expand a little bit more later. Although, but, hmm, okay, that's one possibility with our culture. Um, we don't have an outpost to absorb because it actually went and got booped. We could cutting edge, which I like a lot, keep generating innovation, but I think we can probably happen. Something beneath Nanjing, it got roaded. Oh, that's interesting. Ah. Oh, there's another neutral town. I can just make out the brown border. Oh, warfare is also capped. Well, let's spend some of that. Volunteers is going to give us a berserker. It's cheaper, though. Berserkers aren't bad. I'll drop a berserker in New York. I think we probably town... What if I town... You guys each already have one. Nico's got one. Oh, hold on. I should, um... I'm gonna spawn a raider here. Or raiders, plural. Ooh, that's a little bit tough. Hang on. Hang out, Nico. We'll uh, give you some more troops in a second here. Yeah, I was hoping to wait for the border expand. Oh, I guess I could... Hold on. I'm gonna spend money. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna rush the Civic Monument. Oh, I might have to wait a turn for the border expansion to actually trigger. Did we just not spend the culture this turn? I wonder if it carries over. I guess this is a good time as any to check. We're at 67 of 64. I'm gonna end turn. Okay, 74. And we'll make sure this doesn't get reset down to zero here. So Belfast. 100 wasn't enough to give us an expansion immediately. That's a little annoying because I would like to put the town a little further away just to help with expanding more. But if I put it here, clearly everything around the town here is going to get improved because it's got all these resources. We'll probably mine that and we'll put something over there. Uh, although, assuming this doesn't reset our culture to zero, we can we can just sit on this a little bit more. Whoops. But it's going to take a few more turns before the borders expand. Yeah, it is split between all tiles, but I just assumed we we're close enough. Every other time I've built one of those, it's been enough to get the expansion, but I guess it's been a little closer. All right, I'm going to go and plop a town. Right here. Hello, Springfield. I have enough points for things, but uh, did I? Am I saving up for the midden? I've got the reminder for it, but no, I don't actually need it now. New York could use a little bit more food. And really, the clay pit isn't the most brilliant thing in the universe to be working. So 
or unrest, no, that's fine. We could set up another salted meat thing. So, salt house. I'll put a reminder there. I think we can build it next turn, yeah. You just wait one turn. So, you're escorting my settler. I think, yeah, we'll drop it probably on one of these two tiles. Maybe this one. A little further from everything. Bit of a gap back here, but maybe what we'll do, actually, maybe even with Belfast or something, maybe the next town could have been there, or we could build another town in New York over here just to fill this in, or maybe uh, Sozu when it needs it. Okay, you! I know it's going to be quite a long trip, but get here. I wonder if they can discover it from sea. We'll find out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to land it over there. I guess I could probably see if the button exists on the unit. No, it doesn't actually have a discovery button. Normally, it'd be grayed out. I'll put it here, and then we'll land. Okay, since we have a group moving over here, this one could move maybe just south, just to sort of spot do Barbarian Busting, or we send a couple of you to Sozu. Oh, wait, there was a Barbarian over here. But there won't be for very long. We got our crossbow over here, who should do huge damage against this line. And yeah, if we check New York now, I believe unrest would grow. Yeah, see, plus four. We only need one unit to cancel it, but we're going to move both of these back shortly. This guy continue moving. What is another lamb spot? You're good. You have two units there. Maybe what I'll do right now is I'll just split these guys up here and throw you guys in here. Just to make sure no barbs suddenly appear. Hello, Humpy. I just gotta keep vassalizing all the things. Just park yourself here. I think that's fine. Okay, smelting technology is done. That's gonna be great. We do we actually haven't started doing any mines yet, but we're we're on a cusp of it, so that's gonna be okay. Should I maybe backtrack to Age of Bronze? Just going to take us one turn to research this. Gives the ability to rush culture. Uh, this gives us the claim territory ability uh, with um, exploration XP, which is nice. What else does it give us? The market. Okay, maybe the bribe. Could occasionally as an emergency might be good. It does give us an envoy right away. Let's do this. If we had one more neutral town, I might keep them alive so I can test the envoy. Maybe there's one over here or well, not right now. As I say, I could send it overseas. All right. Belfast needs something else in its construction. You well, I think we're going to do the skull tower and be useful for defense. Plus, it gives us a more vision, which is nice. Plus, it gives us exploration XP, which I think might be useful. Time to pay the iron price. Bribery and claiming territory seems to be a cool vibe. I don't know what you're talking about. Nope, barbarians just suicided themselves. Great stuff. Okay, so we have this envoy. So I'm going to start moving you over here just in case. Actually, why don't you move up over here in case we find a neutral town? Oh, you go back to New York for some unrest busting. Thank you very much. And you continue your move where we're going to settle over here. You also continue your move. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're coming over here just to sort of do visioning, fog busting. We can get another road connection. There might not be another neutral town over here. Yeah, you guys just guard old new old York. Officials is done. And so now I'm going to go into Age of Kings. Which will end the Age of Blood. We had a hoot with it. But let's move on to the next era. Well, I got a reminder. Ugh, these reminder systems are so good. I got a reminder that I want to build a salt house. So I'm going to drop it here. It's going to get worked. Nice. So no one's working the clay pit, which I think is fine. Um, there's not a lot of production in New York. Yeah, maybe I do want to build a town over here. 
because the Jason tiles are cheaper. Yeah, these hills are very expensive to go into. They're not gonna. We're not gonna expand our borders into that for a long time. It might be worth dropping a town here just to claim those. Maybe the next time we get culture. Oh, I meant to just check how many culture points we had carry over with us. Is this the same turn? Well, last turn might be good. Yeah, reminder's good for the ADHD. Band. Yeah. It's especially good when I'm streaming because because of the conversation and stuff, some things go better with conversation. Some moves get thought out more, but a lot of things get skipped a lot more easily uh, by trying to do real time uh, conversation. I'm going to put a reminder here for the settler, which does have a cooldown. We can order research, but this does scale based on prosperity. So we're going to want to use it somewhere. We're going to want to use it the place with the most prosperity. Speaking of Pittsburgh, you can see here it's at 170 percent prosperity it's outpacing the others because of the merchant yeah no oh we can totally replace the clay pit you can destroy an improvement it refunds you i believe 25 percent of the uh the points that was used to purchase it clay pit is really cheap so like it's kind of irrelevant even if it didn't give me any but it is nice uh, later on things do get pricier so yeah we can destroy it use something else the other thing we can do so for production we've got a few different things we could slam down more clay pits we could also um put down uh, the kiln, which will upgrade the clay to bricks. Now, the production is still a clay pit gives us one production, one improvement points. A kiln upgrades the clay to bricks and adds an extra production and improvement points. So between the clay pit and the kiln, both of them produce the same amount, except the kiln also gives you engineering XP, which is very nice. And later on, we will get buildings that will do more. The the higher end kiln, I think it's called Brickworks, uh, I think converts like two or maybe three clay at a time. Uh, so you don't need as many of them. Uh, so there's little things like that. Same thing with the lumber, which if we built the forest right now, the forester actually gives us uh, a logs, which is two production. Now that doesn't add to the base tile. So the clay pit is one production, one improvement. The forester is two production. So kind of samey. Uh, and then we could also go and build these saw pits. Uh, this saw pit is interesting because it does convert three logs into three lumber. So the saw pit can support three... Um, three foresters, which is nice. Currently, we only have two forests. Actually, and this deep forest isn't even in the borders of New York, so currently we only have one forest over here. But so far, so okay. Can one kiln be fed by multiple clay pits? Well, again, it's the um, it's the limits. If we look at the kiln, it just converts one clay to one brick, and that's it. But the later ones will do more. Um, again, we, I don't know when the, the Brickworks comes up. It might be in the Age of Kings, so we'll take a look at it there. Um, and I think it, it does either two or three clay, in which case it can be fed from multiple clay pits and, in fact, has to. We will also unlock the ability to export and import resources. I haven't messed around with it too much, but that can also be another way to get some interesting optimization. Budge. You ass bud. Maybe instead of keeping my troops in Nicomedia, what I should do is keep them here in what is now Portland. So annoying. Stupid barbarians. Wipe them out. All of them. We're going to come over here. We'll settle this city next turn. Brickworks might be in age five. Yeah, it's possible unless it was a backfill. Okay, yeah, I still want to save up for just the Reform Kingdom, please. And as for you, I think you're kind of just in a chill here. I might send a couple of you into there. Just leave some units, which may or may not be strong enough, but at least it's giving us vision. We'll pop in there. Oh, there's a Barbarian over there. Oh, I have to remember, now with the Exploration XP, I can claim territory. Hold on a second. You guys. I forgot. So, as I was saying, it's going to take forever for New York to expand these tiles. Or is it? Mmm. So, we'll probably want to build a mine on this tile. Which will give us a bunch of iron and we can make some ingots. I don't know if we've got anything we can consume the coal for, although it'd still get production from working that. I don't want to spend all my exploration points there. Is there a cooldown to that ability? There's not, although I think the cost will go up every time we use it. So, we might want to be a little choosy. No reason for me to claim more tiles right now, because we don't have the improvement points anyway. So we'll just wait. Death to all barbarians. And really, death to everyone else who isn't me. Mm -hmm. Hey, 
Soul Jam. Right now, I'm not planning any multiplayer for this. But I am I am very much enjoying the game. I have to say, um, the first time I played it, I didn't really enjoy it. I found it sort of tricky, and I didn't really... It's not immediately intuitive, because the thing is, there's a lot of systems in this game. Each, like, all these domains and stuff. And each one of them is actually kind of simple. But there's so many that it's hard your first time through to kind of really take in what is happening with it. And also, like, how are they supposed to intermingle? So I actually didn't enjoy it the first time I played it. It took me a couple of tries to, like, kind of load the entire system into my brain. And now I'm feeling great. All right. Let's settle Miami. Miami, of course, inland in the mountains, known for its heavy mining industry. Everyone knows that. Uh, yeah, army can just chill here. That's fine. You can keep moving around the south. That's groovy. You can keep going to support Sozu. Suzu? I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. Whatever. Just rename all the cities to Bob. Well, keep moving up because we want to scout that last area there. And also famous for a cold climate. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Very, very close to the poles and therefore very chilly. Sujo. So, Chaos Meter filled up. Event. Chaos. Flood in Umungundalavu. A large storm has flooded the streets of that place. Rising water now threatens the clay pit there. So, if I accept, it destroys the clay pit. Or I can pay 450 bucks. Honestly, this is, I think, a time where I'm totally willing to accept just that getting destroyed. I mean, we have the money to uh, absorb it, but the money's a good buffer against scarier events, and we can we can use some money to accelerate production in places. Yeah, it's a vassal city clay pit. Like, I'm fine with this. Cool. I'm just say, it might... Yeah, I think... It might, um, yeah, this thing is smoking. So it, this is even just a in a raise status, presumably, which would be cheaper to replace it. Um, it doesn't say raise. Maybe it's not smoking. Maybe it did remove one from the map completely. As I say, it might be cheaper for them to replace it. But I can't because it's a vassal city right now, so we're not doing that. Um, we could go and do some integrations. Again, my plan is probably to integrate in the north. Probably Topeka, probably Nico. Those are the two targets. And their meters are still filling up, so I'm not too worried about that. So I didn't go and engage right away because I'm worried about that more powerful army behind it. Like, if we take some damage, are we going to be at risk from this thing? Oh, we have enough Warfare XP for, to summon some raiders. Never mind. That's going to be perfect. Um, let's grab one of these guys, throw you in there. Tell you what, you just go sit in Portland. You go and smash this. Now we're good. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, we don't... Oh, I'm going to love the innovation. Innovation is great. I love to see that happen. We still haven't seen any wonders on this particular run, which is one of the things that can be unlocked with innovation. I've seen the Colossus. I've seen the Great Library, unless they came from something else. I don't know. Come back over here. Chillax. There we go. Full vision. I guess we'll move you over in this direction. Uh, the pyramids are not a wonder from the event. The pyramids are something you get from one of the um, one of the national spirits that we didn't take. There's a pyramids builder. And that's how you can do that. What? Were you guarding a goody hut? I think maybe it was guarding a goody hut. A prospector is wandering the wilderness, exiled from their homeland. They have lost everything. So we can share basic supplies, send them on their way. We get a prospector, which can uh, discover gold on a hill tile. We can get 30 exploration XP, which is enough to maybe claim a tile or something. We can take more, take their equipment, dispose of the rest, take more XP for chaos. I don't think there's any reason to do this. I have not seen the Petra yet, so I don't know if we can build the Petra. Fingers crossed. We have a fair amount of exploration XP that we're not using, although we might end up taking an exploration idea in the next age, assuming the Age of Kings have got a spirit. I don't mate. Do we take the Prospector? I'm kind of tempted to just take the XP here.
Oh, someone completely break the game with Ray. Yeah, the, the Raiders' um, Ashel idea is in, completely open. We took it for run because this run because it was going to be a heck of a lot of fun. But it's completely OP and needs to be nerfed hard. More barbarians behind there. Hmm. You guys chill there. You guys keep moving around here. Yep, you're going to go and settle up in the city. Well, not settle, but just park yourself there. Um, this city is having a really hard time growing. We might need... I might need to buy it a tile. Although, forging here until it builds fishing boats... It's production still going to suck. I don't suppose there's any way to see how many improvement points you have banked, huh? Because this is how much it's contributing to me. But it's possible the city has a bunch of improvement points banked, and it's just like, I probably would have just built a dock. And you get out of the boat, the scouts will scout faster. Yeah, but what I'm liking about this is we are spotting a little bit more on the coast, so I kind of want to keep it in the boat form. But yeah, the scouts are pretty fast on land. They might get there faster. Alternatively, if I just give it access to this grassland, it'll have a two food tile. Because right now, the one population is probably working a sea tile for microscopic amounts of money. Yeah, all right. Don't say I never did nothing for you. We're going to claim that territory here. Hopefully, you will work it and grow faster. A little barbarian encampment. Goodbye, this barbarian encampment. Yeah, I don't need a knight right now. We'll just take a production boost in Belfast. Let's say, I don't know how much 20... Oh, it's less than one turn of production. It's about one turn worth of production. Maybe not the best. We finished our first skull towers, you guys. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I could upgrade the, um, the stockpile to a granary here. So the granary, or the stockpile that we already have makes three food. The granary makes 15, quite a lot more. It would absolutely fill up our food need right now, which is nice. We could do the bloodstone walls. I could do the watch for unrest reduction because then I wouldn't have to worry about my troops here, but I think we're fine. The seat of power would give us, so this would be an upgrade, would give us more government XP and some diplomacy XP. Uh, maybe just the crane for plus one improvement points, unless we end up just skipping over it. That's just one extra improvement point per turn right now. It's nice. We probably do want to build it. The question is, what do we build first? New York, you're not growth cap. Yeah, your region level is three, so you can get up to 15 right now. You can queue, yeah. You can, uh, you can only queue a second thing. I think I want the granary. And then I might do the crane, but I... I so you can just shift, and you have the queue here. But... I think I'll, I'll play it by ear. I'm going to do the granary first to help fill the food need. Because I think if we're going to do any other tile improvements in New York, we're probably going to focus on the mining. So, yeah. I think focusing on the food is correct. Oh, speaking of, a reminder for our mine. Yeah. So right over here. We're going to build this. This is going to produce um, two iron, which are worth two production each. So, this is a four production tile. Huge! Because right now, in New York, production is only 15. So this is substantially, that's about a third more production from doing this, right? Um, it moved from the clay pit, so it went up to 18 instead of 19, but that's, that's still great. Um, and we do have the technology to go and build forges, right? So under metalwork, this, or this furnace, this will convert one iron to an ingot. So iron is worth two production. This, an ingot is worth five. So this is a plus three production tile if it gets worked. And again, we'll get better furnaces later on that can convert multiple things uh, in a go. And then once we have ingots, those can be upgraded at the toolsmith to tools, which is even more production. And this this can actually convert two ingots. So what we really want is we already have two ore. So we can make two furnaces to convert all the ore into ingots. Then we'll have two ingots at that point. And we can build a single toolsmith to convert both those ingots into tools. So this is a toolsmith would be a six production tile. Alternatively, we could build a weaponsmith, which gives us ingots into spears, which gives us warfare XP, but it would lower our production. So these are things we might look into. Um, I might put myself a reminder for a furnace. We'll see. That may or may not be the next thing I build in York. I'm not actually sure. Random 
barbarian fight. Okay. Where the heck you come from? Boat can keep scooting a boot. Pull up this barbarian encampment. Um... I guess I'll put in the Warfare XP. It'll give us enough to maybe summon some more raiders if we want to. But I don't know that we have much of a need. Um, do I want to scout out this area? Or keep our cities a little bit more guarded? I mean, they do have passive defenders. Maybe just having a single raider in here with the passive defenders is going to be enough. Same thing here. We'll do that. And we'll see what else we can explore. Huh, goody hut. I don't need a scout cap, so we'll take the exploration XP. Again, we'll probably use a bunch to claim territory. I don't need to rush it because we still don't have the improvement points to take advantage of the extra territory, but that's going to be the plan. I'm enjoying this game very much, Encrypt. Uh, and then Era asks if it's worth a buy. Well, that's a hard question to answer because how much money you have, how much free time you have, what's your personal interest, all those things. Um, I believe it is, it's cheaper than buying Civ, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and some, of the, some reviews have been coming out negative about it. And I don't know. I don't get it. I'm enjoying this and I do plan to play a lot of time. I've played a lot of Civ. We'll put this guy back in at Old New York soon, but I was going to go and do a little scout over here. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do with these guys is probably put one in Nanjing, one in Hampi, just to make sure we've got a little bit of static defense. Meanwhile, this area is a-okay. I'm just going to put you on... We've got one in Portland. You can see these borders expand out. I'm going to have you just... Relax here for doing some barbarian spotting. Also feel we're giving an explicit recommendation for the game when I've also been sponsored to do some content for this. Oh, misclick. We could have used the undo button, which is great. I love the fact that the game has a freaking undo button. That's amazing. We need to see more games like that for people who might occasionally misclick. Oh, we do have some baddies over here. All right, well, we'll probably run Desvus, these guys over here, and the trio of them should be able to do that. Okay, I've got enough points to the furnace. I love the reminder system. So I will drop one here. But really, now we, we still kind of want a second furnace to be able to do this. But now our production in New York is... Oh, it's down to 14. What? Did we have... No, no, it was not done love. I wonder if we had the, um, the local... What's it called? I wonder if we had local reforms running here. Oh, pizza's here. Nice. Or some other modifier, some event that was giving us a little bit more. I hadn't actually moused over here to see what it was coming from. So the, I mean, it's clear the uh, the furnace here did help. So the furnace can convert. Oh no, I'm wrong. As I say, the furnace can convert another ore, but it's not. We'd actually see a red icon over here to tell us there was a shortage. These grayed out ones are being consumed. So what I want to do is create a second furnace, then create a tool, tool thing. So again, I'm going to put a little reminder for the furnace. Once we get enough points, we'll plop that down. Really want to get New York's production up nice and high. So I think we should probably go and rush the culture. We've got the money. Although we're in a little bit of a, what do I want to spend it on? I definitely don't want to do cutting edge because it's about to uh, finish and reset and it would be kind of a waste. Probably we create another town. New York can support another. And I think we get, might get New York to just sort of expand to the south here. I could plop it down on the tundra. It's an interesting idea. Um, none of my cities are at their population cap currently because that would be another target to do. I could slap another one on Belfast, but I'll probably wait for its borders to expand. I'm actually wondering, maybe we should just local reforms New York.
Yeah, Rock Paper Shotgun gave it a bad review, stating you couldn't actually control the game because other players would always research their age before yours finished. Maybe they just had patience to play one to two learning games. Yeah, I think I mean there's there's definitely a learning curve, and if even if you're coming into this as like, well, I'm a civilization expert, that knowledge again superficially this looks similar to civilization, and yes, it's a four X turn based empire building game, but your knowledge doesn't really carry over from one to the other. I found I found my first few games I had really a tricky time, and then it just got better. Propaganda here lowers the uh, chaos meter, um, but it's only at plus three right now, so I think that would be a waste. I think we local reforms in New York and give it a huge out a boost to its uh, output. We could Eureka for 25 knowledge, but that's only about three turns worth of research. I think local reforms will give us about as much knowledge plus all the other stuff. Oh yes, we'll check the overflow. So we are currently sitting at, oh, we're at exactly 72 of 72. So this time, it will go down to, to zero, as it turns out. So no no good overflow check this time. But yeah, now we got a, we're getting a big boost, right? 50% boost to all of our outputs or something like that. So that's not too shabby. Oh, our merchant got spit out of Pittsburgh. Hey, hey, 275. That's not the cap or Hang on, I thought you got pit spit out. You know what? I think I misinterpreted something. I think Pittsburgh may have just built itself an improvement. Yeah, it built the Forester, but I saw the animation here and the icon for the merchant here. So I thought it had spit out the merchant. So it will soon, but not yet. Mm -hmm. Now again, I don't want to go and poo-poo with -poo these reviewers because in a lot of ways, they're probably a heck of a lot smarter than I am and more experienced with more games and might, might be a great judge at figuring out what's actually, I'm just going to, Expand the fog of war here. Um, might be a good successful game in the long run. However, all I know is for me, I I did not enjoy my first attempt or two of millennia because I didn't really get it and things, yeah, felt out of control. But once all of a sudden there's this moment where all the different subsystems kind of click in your head, and it's like I don't even see the matrix anymore, right? I just see farm, plantation, forester, furnace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, right. I was going to meet up over here. Jump in there. That's going to be fine. And over here. Probably I'm just going to pull back. Yeah. <laughs> New continent of south. Oh, the frozen land. I'm not expecting there to be too much exciting over there. You go up to Nanjing. That's going to be fine. You move over here. I guess you'll go up there too, because, sure, why not? And I think what might happen here is I'm going to throw two people to sit in Springfield to defend it. I'll throw two people over here to do some, some, some sort of spotting. Actually, those guys may have just merged together. Oh, I guess we just got attacked over here. Fine. Belfast is idle. We built our skull towers. So again, we get more vision now around Belfast. Plus, you know, very, uh, very cool decor. Resource wise. Needs housing, but that's an improvement thing. You don't. Oh, maybe we should get a council. Unless we're about to get an upgrade in the age. I am wondering about the crane here too. Encampment, the temple. Actually, maybe we'll build the temple rather than the council because we might be getting an upgrade to the council and we could just build it directly. Whereas the temple is still a little newer. Both of them give us one knowledge. This also gives me culture, which I do like. Did I promptly forget something? Probably. Oh yeah, the pizza. I'll go up and take, when's our, hold on. What's the ad break counter? Oh, we just had one. Son of a, I've been the perfect time for that. All right. Let me run up there. Then then we'll next turn. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to have a slice now. Most of it I'm going to save for right after the stream. Tuesday is always a busy day in uh, Casa de Quill. Because Tuesday is my board game night. So we don't usually have a, a full organized meal. So having that for my, uh, my, my pre-board game night break is fantastic. So give me one second. I'll grab a slice. I'll be right back.
All right. Rome, thank you very much for the treat. It is a pineapple, black olive, and jalapeno pizza. Salty, sweet, spicy. Got all the flavors, baby. Mmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No bacon or ham. I know, right? So it's not a Hawaiian. This came about. This is the pizza that Deadpool, well, Wade Wilson, has ordered to himself at the start of Deadpool 1, where he's in that guy's apartment. And I remember we were talking about it on stream, and I said, it's weird. I like pineapple on pizza. I like olives on pizza. I've never combined the two. And people got me to put it on the treat stream. Turns out, delicious. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So yes, you did say... Ask a question, how's diplomacy in millennia? I haven't explored diplomacy very much. <clears throat> For some reason, I just keep killing people. Now, we do know some people, like Spain, over here. Um, actually, we can, you can set up new deals. Uh, I guess we... Oh, right, we're at war with everyone. It's the Age of Blood. We can't diplomacy right now. Normally, there's a few diplomatic options, although not many. Then you send them an envoy. We can spawn an envoy using our diplomacy points right over here. Hang on a sec. I have an envoy sitting somewhere right now that we haven't used. It's going to be in one of these armies. Probably this right here. Yeah, there's my envoy. Um, as I say, when we discovered the technology, we got a free envoy. I remember I was sending in the area in case there's another neutral. But I guess it got accidentally garrisoned in the city. So there's nothing there. We're going to save this envoy with the idea of sending it overseas at some point to meet a neighbor. Anyway, once you send an envoy to another empire, it opens up a lot more trading possibilities, like research treaties and this and that. I haven't really explored that because, you know, war. I'm going to park you in New York. All right, in our, in our capital, in our homeland. another goodie hut yeah so because we're in an age of blood right now because someone was super aggressive i don't know who um everyone's at war with everyone that will end when we advance into the age of kings which we're going to do very soon beautiful tapestries i'm gonna go arts because we currently don't have any way to generate arts points i could use this permacultural export to give a 50 percent prosperity boost in one of our cities but our cities are prosperizing fine as is so i'll probably just sit on it open up some other options later on immigration does let you raise a region's population by one it's um it's got to have a population of 10 or fewer it's kind of a nice ability but we don't have quite enough right now you can also use it in emergency unrest reduction just double checking my cities over here zero unrest zero unrest good we have enough government point to spawn a settler although it's still on cooldown order research i'm still going to wait for the prosperity cap out in places before i do that although i could Order it in uh, in Pittsburgh, wherever you are in the list, because your prosperity is not 300%. Um, I still think we'll see if it does spit out the merchant next turn. Maybe it stays there. Let's we'll see what happens next turn. I felt like it spat, it spat them out, but I might be wrong about that. Um, because I don't, I don't think I've got any ability to recall this merchant manually. Let's see what happens next turn. What are the tabs below the X at the top right? Oh, these things. So this is letting uh, let us know, sort of like, um, you know, if you've played like U4 or something, the banners. So this is telling me New York is idle. It's letting us know we're in the age of blood crisis. And it's letting me know, hey, I got a reminder here. The same things that'll happen in the bottom right corner, which I'm hiding. This is just the, the next button, which cycles between units. This will also cycle to let me know I've got an idle region. It'll also cycle to tell me when I've got a reminder over here. So, hey, let's build our second furnace. So this is now consuming both of our iron which is great. And then what we can do is we can build a, a tool smith. Um, actually, I, I tend to prefer clicking on a tile because then you get this like um, sorted filter here. So metalworks tool smith over here. I'm going to put a reminder for that. That's going to be great because it'll convert both ingots into two tools, which is going to give us a 
bunch more production, which is going to be great. Oh, New York needs sanitation. New York has grown enough that it now has a need for sanitation. So what we might actually need to do is get ourselves a midden heap. 32 to build gives four sanitation plus an extra four if you work it. Work it. The other way we could do it is we could build an aqueduct. Now, I don't think, first of all, we don't have access to an aqueduct. And if an aqueduct were available in the current age, we would see it in this list, but it'd be locked. See the proving ground and the scriptorium. These are buildings that are available, are available with me now if I researched it. We don't see an aqueduct in this list, which means it's not available in this age. Maybe in the age of kings it will be. <coughs> are there adjacency bonuses for buildings? No, except for the town, which gives you a wealth per adjacent building. If it does anything else, I don't know about it. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe there is an adjacency bonus, but nothing that I really know about. We got a couple more hills over here. These could also, these could get mines, which generate copper, or I could build quarries that generate limestone. So those are another couple of options to get some extra production in New York here, which is good to see. So if we were, so currently the only age we can go to is the age of Kings because we're currently in a crisis. We can't go from one crisis into another. I believe they say we weren't in the age of blood and this was the age of iron. I think this is, this is the normal one is the age of iron. If you have a bunch of cities with a need for sanitation, that is not being met. I believe that's one of the things that pushes you towards the age of plague, which is bad. Are there any costs to prevent full wide strategy? Um, I don't know. I haven't tried playing tall or comparing the differences between one and the other. I mean, to be like, the thing is how, how wide are we right now? We have two cities we control directly. Adding more of these cities. So turning more of these vassals into cities we control directly into these these capital regions. If we click on Magar, which is one I could do right now, you can see if we mouse over here, what it's gonna do, it's going to increase our culture upkeep. Currently, we're spending three culture per turn with our two regions. If we add a third region, it goes to seven culture per turn. We're only producing, what's recently gone up, we're currently producing a net of 11. So it costs a lot of culture to go and integrate a bunch of cities. The other thing is I believe the unrest meter over here the unrest in every city grows based on number of regions you have. So if we add more regions, we will get more unrest in every single one of your cities. Now, I don't know, think there's a specific cost to having lots of vassals though. Vassals seem like generally kind of a net positive, but how much they contribute, you know, whatever. So culture's limiting factor, unrest management's kind of a limiting factor, and your, um, your government XP, because every city you integrate, the cost goes up. The cost to integrate goes up as you get more and more of them. Um, in my, you know what? Hang on a sec. Let's just save. If we just mouse switch over just for a moment into my later game Sweden run over here from the videos I was doing, we can take a look at the integration cost over there. Just going to take a sneak peek. We'll be back in our in our real game in a minute here. Is it possible to get a culture production? Presumably. I don't know if there's any penalty to going to having a deficit other than the fact that you're not getting to use your culture power, which is very useful. So if we look here, so if I want to vassalize or integrate uh, Volodga over here, it would cost me 190 government XP. Like the cost skyrockets. Also, you can see I'm currently paying 31 culture per turn because of all my integrations. This would increase it to 44. Now, when you integrate a city and you can choose what buildings you're building in it, one of the things you can do is build buildings that generate more culture or do different things like that. And again, so I think generally integrating is good, but you have to kind of balance it against things, which is very similar to expanding in, in Civ, right? Um, depending on what version of Civ you're playing, more cities adds more global um, unhappiness or adds more global um, maintenance costs or different things like that. <laughs> and yet right now I'm running a kingdom government, so I like having vassals. But yeah, we, it will be interesting to play a very tall one. I think if we were playing, if we, first of all, if we didn't have access to raiders, which is a very OP idea, which I'm sure is going to get nerfed at some point. If we didn't have access to that, we wouldn't have taken so much territory so much quicker. So we would have fewer vassals and it'd be interesting to see how the dynamics change there. All these vassals currently, I don't think are contributing that much to our realm. 
right? They're contributing more as their prosperity goes up, right? So six bucks per turn, less than one research per turn, less than one culture per turn, less than one improvement point per turn. The prosperity isn't capped out. Pittsburgh, its prosperity is capped out, but it's a smaller city. So you can see here, like all, sure, all these things are adding up if we mouse over our research production. So New York is generating 7.5 knowledge. All of my vassals put together are generating five knowledge. So the one city of New York in terms of knowledge is worth more than all my vassals put together. The same thing is almost certainly happening in culture. Yep, same, same thing over here. So they'll get more powerful over time and they're, they're still helping. I wouldn't not want to have them, but if I had half as many vassals as I did now, would we really notice? Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think the important thing is getting a bunch of vassals isn't snowbally. And I think that's very important. All right, speaking of New York. I, maybe we build the bloodstone walls because we can and they're cool. And get a little static defense. They don't really give us anything else other than static defense. And since I've got no threats on my continent other than barbarians, maybe I don't need it, but they are cool, right? Um, I do like the idea of building the crane. I'm what one of the problems is I don't have um, yeah, you don't build settlers. You the way you get settlers is actually with uh, government XP. And I've got it on cooldown. I think it was a 13 cool turn cooldown between it. So we will get some more settlers to put this in, but it's not super mega fast. And yeah, you don't construct them. And I don't really want to build more military units right now because I don't think I need them. And I think the maintenance is okay. You know what? I bet you we're not going to get improvement to the crane right away. Let me build that first. We can use more improvement points. Money is good. In fact, they're really good. and We're about to get an innovation, but let's wait. If we end up taking the money from the innovation, then maybe I'll accelerate a, a building or two. Bloodthirst. Yeah, OK. There, these events must be based on the fact that we're in the Age of Blood. Allowing our war, I bet you if we were in the Age of Iron, we would have probably seen a um, uh, a wonder at this point, because we've gotten a lot of innovations in this era. Allowing our warriors to fight all out and satiate their bloodthirst will make our enemies stronger and strike fear in the hearts of our enemies. If we accept plus one warfare XP from combat per unit. Is this for the rest of the game? I wonder if there's a place you can check all the buffs that are running. Hmm. A per unit upper stack, yeah. It might be in here. Because the viciousness buff, which is from another innovation, is in here. The plus three attack, plus three defense on our raider bands has been great. I don't see anything up he in here about the XP. I think it's on the Empire screen, which would be here or somewhere else. Hmm. Oh, um, I don't really need to pull me back, actually. No, I think you were meant to kind of keep spotting out a little bit more. Although what I might do is grab a couple of these units and throw them in Springfield because the town is more vulnerable than the city proper here. Oh, maybe we'll wait a turn for update. Okay, we'll check again in turn. Let's pop this goodie hut. Elder Village teaching a new way of thinking. We can get 15 culture or we can get 10 innovation. Well, 15 culture is only about a turn worth of culture. Innovation, especially since we just got an event, this is great. That's awesome. 100% want that. And it'll be an Age of King event, so we'll see some very different stuff. Stuff that's not just combat oriented, because honestly, combat oriented rewards aren't doing for us much anymore. Exploration is not cap, but it's it's warning us that it's near the cap. I should probably just poke um, a claim territory. I'm trying to remember what a utility ship does for us. Oh, for resource collection. Oh, you know what? Let's spawn one and see what we can do with it. Oh, I need to use it on a dock, which I don't have. 
All right, screw that. I will use it. Um, New York, again, is going to expand very slowly into these mountains. I'm going to use it to get the, the cold hill over here. We might not even mine it right now. All it's going to currently do is produce one coal, which is worth two production, which isn't worth that much in our grand scheme. We're going to want coal in New York, so at some point we're going to expand over there. But yeah, for now, that's going to be OK. All right. Just just to keep the exploration from capping itself. Um, we want to move one more tile over and then just chillax. Are you moving? Remember what the utility ship is for? I think you can grab fishing tiles outside your border. Okay, that actually would be insanely useful over here. What we need to do... So to build a dock, I can't build it in a vassal because I can't build improvement in vassal territory. Maybe what we should do is claim a sea tile for New York, build a dock. I don't even want to work the dock, but having it will give us a few options. This is going to delay my tool thing, but let's do this. Oh, did it make me a utility boat? Oh, cool. Okay. So you have, what is this button? Oh, cancel harvest, harvest goods. Begin harvesting the goods in from this territory tile. Harvestable by fishers, improvement not present. Territory owner is friendly or neutral. So can I not, I can do it from outside, although probably because it's got no moves. Would this send it to the closest territory, i.e. New York? Let's find out next turn. But again, I might want to send it to the other city. Uh, New York, all right, let's get the bloodstone walls. We've we've delayed it long enough. We got the reminder for the toolsmith, but I spent my points, so we're not going to be able to build it right now. That's okay. I still want 80 points to be able to reform the kingdom tech. I wonder if this is adding now or if it's telling me how much I earned throughout the entire age. Suspect it's telling me how much I earned throughout the entire age. <clears throat> the Age of Kings. Building a castle by specializing in outposts during the Age of Kings provides a culture bonus. Ooh. Generate culture per religious population by founding or joining a religion. Found or join a religion with the found religion culture power or adopt religion arch domain power. Few national spirits unlocked. Castle outpost specializations are now available. New system religion has been added to the game. National spirit slot unlocked. We are going to enter the age of kings. Hey, we've met France. You will address us with respect if you know what's... Man, for someone whose first language was French, I do a terrible French accent. I don't know why. We met Brazil. Greetings with time. We hope we will come to trust one another. You will address with respect if you know what's good. Oh, right. We can do diplomacy now because we're not in a permanent state of war. Hey, hey, hey. So if we take a look, we can see the buttons. There you go. We can start offering peace. Let's offer peace with everyone. There you go. Spain. Uh, France. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. Persia. And Brazil. There we go. Offered offered peace to everyone in the game. And we can end it. It's okay. You have a terrible English accent, too. Hey, now. You're an all-star. Sacre bleu. Dr. Fubar, thanks for the sub. I remember that Twitch Prime. So I could do this, but... Let's go here... Ah, uh, Link Region, New York. Okay, I probably can't change that. Yeah, first time build, we get a free utility ship. The first time we ever build a dock. So I don't see a button for changing how you're linked. So we'll harvest this, send it to New York. There you go. Which brings its food need back up, which is nice. <laughs> its sanitation need is getting a little bit worse. And the garbage men might be on strike. Um, someone asked if the uh, reminder gets reset. I don't believe it does, since I ignored it. I think the reminder is still there. But we might have to prioritize the uh, the midden heap here, just to keep the trash. You think it might, it might be the closest city? We can cancel it next turn. I can take a big trip over to Sozu and see what happens. Barb's over here, but they're fine. Hampi doesn't have any terrain improvements. It's being guarded. 
Uh, I don't see the barbarian camp, and I think the barbarian camp it becomes visible as long as you've spotted it before. I used to be sure I could move over and see if something appears. But yeah, I think barbarians can just spawn in tiles. So even here with vision, unless they landed maybe from this boat. As I say, they came out of nowhere. All right, we're going to go and take a look at the technologies available to us in the Age of Kings. Seven technologies to choose from this time. You'll notice we also have four ages to choose from. Again, we didn't have a choice of ages out of the Age of Blood because we were in a crisis. The only option was a standard age after that. But because Age of Kings is a standard age, we have the option of, so a standard age right behind my head is Age of Renaissance, research three techs, do that. Well, all of them you have to research three techs, so that's the same. Age of Discovery is possible. We need to build five docks for that. Okay, we don't really have a lot of coastland for building docks. The Age of Intolerance is possible. It needs 20 charges of intolerance. I believe those accrue if your population has a desire for religion that's not being met, I think. And then the Age of Conquest requires that we have 150% greater power score than any other. We're actually at 143. If we just slap out a couple of units, Age of Conquest would be an option. I don't know if we care. Like, we've got the whole continent to ourselves right now. Do we care about going for an Age of Conquest so much? I don't know. I might want to do Age of Discovery. Maybe we can slap down a few docks. Or maybe we'll just fall into an Age of Intolerance without trying. Or we'll go directly into Renaissance. Who knows? Let's look at this technology. So we have Machines. Adds two new things. A workshop building. We build it. It gives us eight production and one engineering XP. It is an upgrade over another building, which we may or may not already have. We also have a logging camp improvement. So this is an improvement over our forest gathering um, building here. So uh, this is going to work. It gives us four production and gathers forestry. Uh, we have the ability to build. Yeah, what about two continents? You're right. We have one continent. What about second continent, right? Medieval University is researchable. It will give us access to a Privy Council, which is worth two knowledge. That's going to be an upgrade over the Elder Council, I'm sure. And also a Medieval University, which is the first of its line. Gives one knowledge that will be have for uh, upgrades down the road. We can also treaties, which allows us to work. Uh, just, just a city can just work on this project and generate knowledge. We have a few of these projects. I don't think we've made use of them this run so far because we've always had something to do. But down here, we do have some projects we can do. Levy workers has been available the entire game. We do this, it converts production to improvement points, which could be very handy. But you can see there's two more over here. They're locked because they exist in this age, although we don't have the tech yet. And I like that feature. Same thing here. We can look at these buildings and be like, what's out there? What's available? I guess, yeah, no aqueducts. So that must be a different era. Or maybe the aqueduct would have been in the Age of Iron and we didn't get it because we went in the Age of Blood. That's always possible. We might not have access to everything in there, but we can take a look and see what's there. And, you know, we could always prioritize things. But yeah, so Medieval University would give us the ability, if we've got a, a city that doesn't have anything useful to do, it could generate extra uh, science. Guilds. So this gives us access to a great hall. You can only build one per nation. It gives us uh, diplomacy XP for every nation with whom you have high diplomatic favor, which currently is probably wouldn't be many, but it's interesting that it's there. Maybe we'll make use of it at some point. A market square gives us foreign import slots and diplomacy. So the ability to import and export goods between cities starts to become something now. The villa is a different housing building. Currently we have, what's it called? Just quarters or something like that? Dwellings, I think it's called. Um, I can't remember how much housing the dwellings gave us. Five? I think the dwellings don't give much housing. The villa gives 10, but it's, a villa is not actually meant to give you a crap ton of housing. The thing is, when you work it, it gives you a bunch of wealth and luxury, which is a new need that can start to develop. Come on, mouse over. The jeweler here, when you work it, it gives you art XP, but it also converts gold into jewelry. So gold we can get by getting prospectors, slapping them on an extra hill, and they'll discover gold. If we have two gold mines, we can feed that both those gold mines into one jeweler. I think a gold mine generates one gold by default. Feed those into a jeweler, which will upgrade... Uh, the gold to jewelry, which is going to be worth more money and generate luxuries for us. A winery. Yeah, I think I think the default dwelling is five housing, which is plenty at its stage. Later on, um, we'll get like apartments, which is worth like 40 housing points. Ridiculous. A winery converts two grapes or rice into fine wine. I think we already had vats that generated, turned those things into wine. This makes them into fine wine. Um, that is worth, I think they were, 
I think wine was worth culture. I think this is culture and a bunch of luxury. I'm not sure. And then also unlocks the taxation pro project, which lets us turn production to wealth if we've got nothing else to do. Dry compass. So this unlocks the cog unit, new ship, and also fishing fleet, which is a, a better improvement for fish. I think we could already do fishing boats, but this is a better one. Professional army. This is gonna be non-optional, although we don't necessarily have to rush it. And the reason it's non-optional is because this is one of the technologies that increases your max army size, which is incredibly valuable. So right now our armies are size four. You start with armies of size three. We already upgraded to four. This will upgrade us to size five armies, which is great. It also gives us the barracks building, which is worth warfare XP and gives combat XP to the units when we spawn them. The armory over here, which is, um, it doesn't have the full text here. If I right click on it, Still doesn't, but I believe the armory is one of the buildings that converts uh, ingots into weapons, which means you're taking something that gives us production and converting it into more warfare XP. I think it gives us warfare XP as is, and then it can also work stuff. Oh, no, this is a castle outpost improvement. Never mind. I'm getting confused with something else. This is if we build a castle outpost, we can use this. It also unlocks the pike unit and the long sword unit. Next, go away tooltip. Organized religion. Better or worse than the disorganized one? I don't know. But it gives us the ability to build a holy site. So this is a building that generates four religion points. This is for religion need. If your cities have a religion need, a holy site building can provide some of that. A large temple, which gives you culture and knowledge and satisfy your religion need. Do note though, these require a religion to exist before you do it. I think we should create a religion. Russell Sproutism. We can also build an abbey which gives you religious points. This is an improvement, so it's a tile improvement, so you can spam these to get a bunch of religion need satisfaction, and it also apparently generates religious texts. And finally, we have feudalism. So we got the large plantation, so we can already build a plantation. That's what we've been building. Um, farms in this game, unlike Civ, farms are just what you just build on generic grasslands. If you've got access to like a rice or anything like that, you build plantations on those. So this is an improvement to the plantation that generates more food, uh, the plowed farm, an upgrade to our farm. So this, these are very valuable because the same number of tiles, but they're just more effective. A ranch, which is an upgrade to the pasture. A kitchen, which, so we already have the ability to salt meat, right? To turn meat into salted meat, which increases its food value. The kitchen is stronger because it converts meats or olives or sugar to delicacies, which are worth, I believe, more food than the salted meats ever are. And they give us luxuries. So in theory, our uh, salt house we'd want to replace with a kitchen. I don't think they're a direct upgrade from another. I think we'd explicitly tear it down. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if we got this, we'd get a green arrow. This increases the maximum town levels. So towns increase the region level. Um, town, your regions can support a maximum number of towns. Currently, I believe we can have two towns per. Um, you can upgrade the level of a town as well. Uh, you do that with the engineering points and then you can even specialize the towns. This increases the max level uh, that we can have. And then the castle town improvement over here uh, so this is for castle outposts. If we build those, we build these, they give us culture and they gather stuff. So I really probably should be making a lot more use out of outposts than I am. What do we research first? What do we, what do we research first? Maybe medieval university to get more knowledge so that we can research everything else faster. Medieval university into feudalism because it's got a bunch of improvements. And then we pick up organized religion after we founded a religion. army. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any reason to research organized religion. Oh, well, hold on. Hang on a second. We can found a religion now. Well, first of all, let's found a religion regardless, right? I mean, come on. We do get some extra little buttons. But yes, found religion. Create a new religion in the capital city without an existing one. New York City. Make a custom religion. We can choose one of the, the pre-made ones ready to go. Um, I mean, is it just like, what is New York like? Again, bagels, pizza. <laughs> Saying, hey, I'm walking here. Hey, it's a Paradox logo. No, it's not. Some sort of Ouroboros. Deep dish pizza. Broadway. I like deep dish pizza. We can spread. No, wait, that's Chicago. Deep dish pizza. <laughs> hey, now. You're going to start a war in chat. Yankeeism, baseball. Traffic jam. 
I like pizzaism. And we'll put it in all caps because it's awesome. There you go, Beninsus. Big brain moment. Oh, wait. We're America. I gotta spell it the American way. Would that be a Z in here? The American way? Would that be with a Z? I feel like there's too many Zs. I'm sorry, I mean Zs. No, just an S. The slice of pizza? with an olive on it. There you go. We have now founded a religion, which is present in New York over here. Yay! Dominant religion is pizzaism. Six population believe it. Um, they've got some faith spread. Some of our population is not religious, but you know, give them time, they'll, they'll start to learn the ways of pizzaism. That's thing one. Next, before we go and research anything else, let's pick a new national spirit, eh? So age two, four, six, and eight, we get to pick a new national spirit. Where do we pick? Well, first of all, one might want to consider what do we have a lot of XP banked for? Also, what are we producing a lot of XP? Currently, we're producing no arts XP. We're producing no diplomacy XP. That can change. Producing only two engineering XP. Warfare, we're only producing two per turn, although maybe with more fighting, we'll get more. But we do have a lot of it banked, so that's something to consider. Exploration. We're generating five. Hey, those skull towers are paying off. So, because these will consume that, right? If we look at explorers over here, um, every one of these is going to take exploration XP to unlock. If we look at crusaders, those will take warfare XP. I don't know that we need a warfare one right now. Who are we going to fight? Right? engineering or machinery which uses engineering xp which we could generate with you know the appropriate buildings and improvements we can start moving that way this gives us a different prospector so the normal prospector makes gold this gives us an iron prospector um so it gives us one immediately from unlocking this and then we can spend engineering points to generate more although our engineering points will be heavily tied up in progressing through this over here so we get bonus production from coal. Hey, we've got coal here. We've got coal in a couple of our newer cities as well. Furnaces generate wealth. That all kind of works together. Trebuchet, again, we may not need currently. Uh, unlocks Tinkerer. Oh, it's a new tile improvement that converts tools into machines. Ooh. Oh, so it, gen it converts production into improvement points. So we may or may not build many of them. We'll see. Clock Tower generates a bunch of luxury, just a building for that. Um, yeah, probably we might not go down the trebuchet branch at all, and I don't think we'll need it. We could probably get everything else and get that. What else do we have to look at? In the diplomacy, we've got Shogunate. Gives us samurai, spawns a demo on friendly settlement, powerful leaders. Uh, samurai have double unrest suppression, promotes demo into a shogun, unjustified war. See, I don't, I don't think this is where we're going. I don't think we need that. Now, does the spice need to flow? So here, the spice merchants benefit us having a lot of outposts, which I haven't been building, and I probably should, because I think outposts are actually very powerful. We just haven't gotten around to really doing it, and maybe we've been denying us a lot of stuff. Tinker is a lot of fun in Gloomhaven. Hey, yeah, baby. Gloomhaven, great game. So, you know, outposts have uh, wealth. Outposts have a defensive unit, which is good, because right now they're kind of vulnerable. Uh, unlocks care advancery. Reveals spice as a new good in the desert. We do have some desert tiles. You know, where's, hold on, where's the Petra button? Ah, no Petra button. So that's, that's a thing. Down in arts, we have chivalry. Now chivalry is quite interesting. Um, increases vassal population growth per turn. We have a lot of vassals. Call banners is actually an insane button. Push this button, every single one of our vassals spawns two peasant units. Now, peasants aren't the strongest unit, but it will generate a million units in all of our vassals, so we don't have to worry about protecting them from freaking barbarians. Gives us the tapestry weaver improvement that turns cloth into tapestry, which generates art XP, which is good because we're gonna need art XP for this. Right now, we're not producing any. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to get buildings and things that generate art XP for us. This is kind of interesting. Dubbing 
This, if uh, I believe a peasant has to have experience points for it, but it lets us upgrade a peasant into a knight. Unlocks a tavern. Who doesn't love that? Our castles, if we build a castle outpost, will generate culture and wealth. Uh, spawns a settler and a knight in capital. Honestly, we could use an extra settler, so that's something. And then we got theologians. I mean, if we're going down the religious route. Unlocks the monastery improvement, which gives us pizzaism satisfaction and generates art XP, which we need early on. Doctrine, bonus faith from religious text goods. Uh, monasteries generate wealth for us. Capital has more pizzaism um, satisfaction immediately. The large temple building on turn start art XP relative to the region's population. Converts all religious population in one of your regions to your religion. Promote miracles. Feels like an inquisition more than anything else, but sure. Bonus culture from religious population. I don't know. Yeah, Pizza Huts, not Monasteries. You're right, Pizza Huts. Do we go this way? Do we lean into religion? Again, we're not generating the Arts XP right now, but that could maybe change. I wonder if we go... Yeah, I don't think we I have no... We have no buildings that would currently generate any Arts XP. I kind of dig it. Yeah, this is going to give us some points. What happens is... um. Each nation, is it saying it here? Uh, the first nation to pick one receives bonus XP and generation for its domain. And I think this goes up. If we pick, if we weren't first here, let's say three other nations beat us into this age and they'd gone Explorers, Crusaders, Cons. I think all these would give you a bunch more uh, points. I think you might get 10 per. It says capitals, you have multiple capitals. Yeah, like every one of our cities is basically a capital. Our, our actual capital, the, the city that we started with, the, the city that we would think of as a capital if we we're playing Civ is called a homeland in this game. You know what? I think I'm going to go theologians. Yeah, let's do it. Let's try it. See how it goes. I will select you. So the fact that we don't have any arts production is a little bit crap. What text here would give us some arts production? Well, we do have a religion now. Holy sign. Okay, none of these gives us art. So we got to make some priorities. And this was mostly just terrain improvements, which likewise is not going to help. We actually, we might want to scroll back and see if there's anything existing we could unlock that would give us art. It would be really cheap to pick up too. Okay, the jeweler would produce art for us. So that's one option. So we'd want to get a bunch of gold mines and then do the jewelers. Yeah, I think art's in the previous era, huh? All right, let's scroll backwards. First of all, is there anything way long ago that we left? We left defenses, that's fine. Although we could research in zero turns and we might, but let's not worry about it. So how much art is in the Age of Blood? I don't think the horse's tech is going to help us. What about the War Council? Knowledge, diplomacy. I don't think the Age of Blood is giving us a lot of art XP. Huh. Yeah, I think the Age of Blood replaced some arc text. Yeah, I think that was the Age of Blood was a masterpiece in itself. I agree. I guess we're going to have to go guilds and just build jewelers. And then meanwhile, so in New York over here, we've got these hills. We could discover some gold there. We can build prospectors, I think. No, prospectors have to be spawned. From exploration. So we're gonna need two prospectors in New York. Is there a cooldown on these? Oh, wait, hold on, I gotta... Okay, there's no cooldown. You're right. Gladiator should give martial arts points. You're completely right about that. All right, there's gold in Demnair Hills. We're going to have to mine them for the gold, which is going to give a bunch of wealth. But we're going to convert that wealth into gold at the jewelers. Um, I think the jewelers... Oh, we don't have the tech right now. I think it converts to gold. Order research based on population and prosperity. So yeah, Pittsburgh is still small. 
Okay. Still want to get this going first. We've got Spawn Settler in one turn, although I might go and save up for the Kingdom Reformed first. Yeah, we still need... Yeah, we still need sewers. That's true. But yeah, who needs sewers when the streets are paved in gold? I like that. I guess everyone can just chill. Everyone can set peace. Excellent. Reminder, Spawn Settler. Yeah, I don't know. Do we spawn the Settler or do we finish this? We get the, the Innovation. Actually, I probably want to wait for the Innovation event to happen anyway. And the Settler's fairly cheap and it's got a long cooldown. I think I should pop a Settler. Yeah, let's do that. I'm Miami. I'm still thinking of coming down here and grabbing all these fish, but oh, hello, Barbarian Encampment. Arts XP! Oh, also my warfare is capped out. But the monastery, the monastery generates art. Good. This is what we needed. We need this critical point here. We did enough Arts XP so we can start popping down monasteries okay and that's what we're going to want to do sorry pizza huts the scribes give us okay is it civic category is the monastery under oh it's an outpost improvement for fuck's sake all right that's what I get for not making enough outposts. Warfare. Oh, we no longer... Yeah, it goes away at age four. We no longer have the ability to spawn raiders. We can do um, volunteers, which are currently still berserkers. And I guess that's going to have to be fine. So we'll do that just to not be sitting on the, uh, the points cap. Oh, yes. Settler. Okay, I want you... So we need pioneers to make ourselves some outposts. And I'm gonna want some people to defend it this time around. Miami will probably grab that. Yeah, I don't think I feel the need to capture any resources. I just wanna make sure to grab some land so we can build those improvements. Yeah, build a coastal town and build a bunch of docks. Actually, that's a good idea. Sure, open borders is fine. There you go, trade. You've built a market in one of your regions. Have I? I think it's spawned because of the open borders. The market provides a slot for foreign import. Select one of your capitals with the market. Make sure the workers tab is selected. Then select the foreign import slot to the right. As you meet other nations, the goods they produce are added to the available for import. When you have a war or hostile relationship, you lose access to the goods. Mm -hmm. Hang on a sec. Did we build one in Belfast? Oh my God, click on the thingy. Oh, the pizza parlor. No. Yeah, there's no import things in New York. No, yeah, it's just because we have open borders. It triggered that, but it might need to be tweaked. We might want to build a market so we can do that. Um, the keep, I don't know, maybe we just do the crane for more improvement points. Since there's no upgrade for it in this era. Yeah, let's do this. We might have captured one. I guess that's true. One of our vassals might have it. That could be the case. So I'm still waiting for these. So Nico here is coming along. We could rush it with Integrate Vassal. We could get five extra points. I could finish Nico and then integrate it this turn, but I think I can probably just wait. That's going to be all right. If anything else, do we want to maybe get another merchant to boost more of this prosperity? Oh, hold on. That reminds me. I guess the Pittsburgh does not spit out the merchant. Okay, that is important to know and might change some things. Let me spawn you here and put you in there. I know this is a bigger city, but I'm going to want to integrate it first. Or maybe, okay, hold on. 
I'm not going to be integrating all of these. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put a reminder for Spawn Merchant. Next time I get it, I'm going to put it in one of the larger of the vassals to boost its prosperity, and that's going to be our target for the gain knowledge ability on the culture power. We can specialize you to a castle in theory. We had the engineering points. Oh, good point. Oh, I can't undo any further than this. Nope, dang. I mean, I've got it set to auto save every turn. We could just reload the turn, but. Yeah, undo is mostly just for undoing moves. We do make this into a castle, it will defend itself. But for now, we'll just do this. Make sure no barbs blow that up again. Take merchants out and move them. Yeah, how? Because I thought I thought what I thought, but I can't figure it out. Oh, there's the eject merchants button. Well, first of all, Pittsburgh. Now, are you going to lose a bunch of prosperity? You're at 300. No, you're still there. And the thing I'm confused, I thought in my other game, the merchants got auto ejected when it breached its cap. I'm putting you in Alexandria, but here in Alundi, I will eject you, move you here, and put you in here. So the idea being, this is probably going to stay a vassal for longer. Maybe there's a setting to do it automatically. Yeah, maybe. Or, you know, I'm just dreaming. Um, yeah, keep moving this way. Unload. And yeah, we'll have to wait a turn before you can actually discover that landmark. And a couple of you over here, please. So, if I settled here, I'd be able to build docks. I'd also be able to get fisheries like instantaneously to feed this city. We'd want its borders to expand more inland, so we'd be building towns sort of backwards, but that's okay. Yeah, I think I like that. I might just get you to park yourself there and wait. Appreciate the pizzaism logo, the pineapple slice pizza. <laughs> Um, next to the flax on the plains would be good to natural harbor. Yeah, I mean, it would look good, right? Over here, but then we'd have to expand our borders a bunch before we could drop a bunch of docks. You think they come in a box? Oh, got attacked by random barbarians. There might be a barbarian encampment over here. Oh, we never checked the full north here either. Eh, seems okay. All right. New York is... I like that you can convert a city back to a vassal as well. We do have positive unrest in New York. Although we could fix it simply by having an extra unit there, which might not be the dumbest thing ever. And and specifically what we could do is we could build the city guard, which is double unrest suppression. Yeah, we don't have our sanitation yet, I know, and it's getting worse. It's getting poopier. Hey, well, let's just do one turn. We'll just pop out a city guard. Um... Governor XP is pretty good. I think I'll queue up the ESC to power. Oh, we got a midden reminder. I have enough improvements for a midden. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. I mean, I also want the toolsmith. I also want the jeweler. But yeah, let's get a trash heap going on here in New York. Bam. And just like that, we went from 25% to 125% sanitation. Uh, we could also work this tile to bring it to 200, but this is fine. This is groovy. 
Yeah, this Envoy, um, I'd have to send it overseas. We still don't have the ability to enter ocean tiles, so I can't really send it anywhere. We have no neutral towns. I don't think it does anything for my vassals, does it? Vassalize minor nation. Open negotiations. Capital nations you're not at war with. Integrate vassalized territory. Oh, wait, it increases integration. That's what I forgot about. Maybe this is the one that spits itself out. Oh, my God, I'm done. Could have moved that out ages ago. I forgot that it had that use. I haven't made use of merchants and envoys enough, nor outposts enough. And I suspect all of those things are very powerful. And it's just part of the learning curve. See, imagine I wrote a review right now complaining about how long it takes to, in to max out the integration on these cities and how that's like ruins the gameplay. Five out of ten. And then it turns out, well, I'm just not using the tools to do it right. Mm. Hey, let's discover this landmark. It's Mount Everest. You can send your envoy south to Penguin Area and vassalize them. <laughs> um, perfect. All right. Admittedly, envoys are not the, the top priority during Conquest. That's true. We have been going with a fairly different vibe here. Yeah, I think I still like the idea of settling there. Um, I'll send you to Belfast. Who is potentially... Generating a little unrest, so we need a guard there. Hello, envoy. So you're not going to be needed in Nico. But Umong, we've already got a merchant there. Let's send the envoy there as well. Oh, no, wait. we No, that's integration. If we're going to send it anywhere, actually, it's going to be Topeka. Yes. It's going to take a while to get there. Spain and France have ended the war. Good for them. I mean, a lot of those wars carried over by the Game of Blood for some reason. Did they say Game of Blood? The Age of Blood. Um, You're not a friendly person. Mash. What are we doing with this explorer? I mean, I could park it back at sea for now and get ready for when we can enter the deep things. Ooh, let's spend the money to rush this. We've got tons of cash and we're about to get a, an innovation, which is great. I could absorb this outpost, but that's not what we're looking to do. I don't want a cutting edge right now. We could local reforms here. I could Eureka. How much is this giving us? 75 knowledge right now. Okay, that's a big Eureka. We're going to do that. Nearly finishing guilds. I didn't check the before number, and this is at zero again. It might not overflow. Right, I want to build a toolsmith in New York, but do I want to get... I'm going to get a second gold mine. And yeah, the big thing I want to do is get a jeweler. Oh, yeah, which is not in the list yet because we haven't finished the guilds. So actually, I don't even know if I want New York to work the gold mines right now. Gold is just worth wealth. If I drop these down, if I throw one worker in the mid and it technically overkills our sanitation by one. And only saves us, gives us growth one turn faster. I know the clay pit isn't a ton of production, but why don't you just go into the clay pit for a second? Heck, if anything, working the dock might be better. It still gives us a little bit of wealth, and then it gives us some exploration XP. Do that for now. We'll make some adjustments soon. Yeah, I know. I also want to build an outpost, um, a, um, a monastery. Now, how do I do that? Standard outpost improvement. It has to be in a hill? What? No, it doesn't show up in the list of improvements. All right, well, then we just have to build more outposts. 
There's a bunch of hills over here. So yeah, spawn me a, um, a pioneer when we get some more engineering points, please. Oh wait, I can pack them up. Missionary orders. The pious population of the United States have banded together to form a missionary order seeking to spread the new faith and discover new teachings. If we accept, monasteries are now worth plus one knowledge, plus one diplomacy points. Sure, I don't need the money. An alliance with... You know what? You're just going to start wars on the other continent that I'm not going to care about. figure out how to get the most adjacent hills. I feel like I keep seeing spots where I'm going to have two hills adjacent. Which might be fine. And there might be some stuff far in the north, but I'll outpost over here. I wonder if you use the domain power to absorb an outpost. Ah, all outpost improvements will be removed. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll build it here, further away from Belfast, so that it's not going to get in the way. It will be a lookout in the north here. If it wasn't for this mountain... And maybe that's naturally what happens when you get a bunch of hills. It just has a mountain there. Because if this mountain wasn't here, we could get tons. I mean, there's also the city. Technically, if we built an outpost here, there would be three hills. One's got coal on it, but that doesn't preclude it from happening. So that's a possible spot if we wanted more. But we're also going to be limited by our improvement points and all that, so... Your Millennium Downloads is almost done. Nice, Colton. It, I will be very interested in finding out what people think about it after they get, um, after people get it and put in a few games worth of stuff. Man, things are kind of burnt up over here, aren't they? Hmm. You know, because again, the first couple of games, it won't click. But then after that, at some point, again, it'll be like seeing the Matrix. All right, so we got our guilds down. Now we can build jewelers for some arts XP, which is great. Um, I don't think I'll go feudalism right now because I think our improvement points are going to be getting consumed by A, we're going to want a jeweler, B, I believe the monasteries. So let's go to the university so that we can at least get some research going in our cities by just building that as opposed to doing improvements with improvement points. Um, yeah, I'll get a seat of power for the government XP. Yes, the reminder toolsmith, except that I don't think that's what's going to happen. I wonder now if I've got, yes, the arts category. This, the only thing that gives us art XP that we currently have access to is the jeweler, and I do want to build it. So it converts two gold to jewelry, which is what we're looking to do. We can improve the sheep and stuff later on, too. We may. Improving um resources like this, I find, is less of a automatic you have to do this or else like in sieve like if we don't care about this the meat and the wool that we get from here and we may not it's going to be completely valid for us to put a different improvement on this but this jeweler exist is now being worked and now we generate two arts xp per turn oh fantastic what do we okay hold on we're generating one from something else new york is generating two Oh, one just from the homeland. Okay, our base homeland is generating one for us. Good. And then the jeweler is generating one more. The jeweler's also generating a bunch of luxury right now, which isn't a need, so it's not showing up. We can see we've got a shortage here. Wait, what? This is showing that we've got a shortage of two gold. Oh, because we're not running the actual gold mines. Ha ha ha. Am I okay with this? Obviously, we're not getting full value out of the jewelers. 
But by working the jeweler, we still get an arts XP. And that might be enough for now. Because we're not capped on any needs other than religion. If we were capped on food, I believe the AI would have automatically moved people off of food production into the mines or whatever. How do shortages work? It just it's not being produced, right? We have the potential to convert two gold into two jewelry, but we don't have any, so we're not getting the jewelry. <coughs> There's no penalty. We're just not getting value, full value to the jeweler. But for us, the important part was kind of the arts XP. And we need, we need more thing. I think we may have screwed ourselves slightly because I suspect in the Age of Iron is probably where we would get some more arts producing buildings and we didn't have access to it because of the Age of Blood. It's not like I can mass spam these jewelers. But the monasteries, I guess the monasteries are a solution. Yeah, New York is, you're right, New York's going to grow next turn anyway, some things will fix themselves, they're fine. We are going to end the stream in a moment here. Plan is we're going to stream again tomorrow. So tomorrow's a normal stream for us. Uh, oops. There you go. Well, an oops here, but our scoot, wherever he is, discovered a barbarian. We'll just have him scoot as far as possible, then maybe we can land him next turn. Uh, he didn't die, which is good. We're tapped on our warfare. Probably would just spam some more volunteers, just somewhere. You only have one unit defending yourself here. There you go. Congratulations. Later on, uh, when this is capped, we'll be able to spend all of it on a point to improve um, social... What do they call it? Um, social fabric points. So we'll have some social fabric points we can invest in when those get capped out. But for now, we may as well just get some extra units. Uh, continue move. Yes, with the Pioneer. So yeah, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be streaming as per usual, and we will be continuing this game. Uh, I am trying to get these videos up on YouTube as quickly as possible as well for the people who missed it. Um, oh, there you go. So you need to move here. And uh, I guess you probably need movement points left. Oh, maybe I have to be in it. Oh, no, you're already capped. You're not coming here. Yeah, increase inter in integration. You're done. You're coming to Topeka is what you're doing. We can actually integrate Nicomedia now. So I think we're going to do that. It will eat into our culture production, but we've been generating more culture. So taking a four point hit there, I think is going to be OK. The only thing that might be a little concerning is that we do have a lot of things we want our improvement points for, and we're clearly going to want to spend some improvement points on Nicomedia here. We're also going to need more troops um, to prevent some unrest. That's from Alexander. You can do this, and then you can do this. I think we want to integrate this. I suppose we can wait until next time, but I'm going to hit this button now. So yeah, the needs are brutal over here. We're going to have to spend improvement points immediately to try to fix this up, and we don't have a lot. On the plus side, they do have clay pits, which will give us improvement points, which I'm happy about. Also, right now, no one's working any tile, but that's going to be fixed in a second. First thing I'm going to do immediately is I'm just on the Civic here. I'm going to plop down a dwelling because they do need housing. And, as I say, and that will cause the AI to recalculate what tiles it's working so we don't have to fix them manually. We have positive needs right now, which is great. We have negative unrest, which is great. So everything is fine currently. That's great. So we're going to have a new city that we can go in and develop some things and hopefully boost our production quite a bit. We have a lot of hills here. I'm thinking these hills get prospected for gold, and we build some more jewelers. Maybe short term. We'll see. We're going to wrap up the stream here, though, folks. Thanks a lot for coming out. We're going to raid a Kiss for Luck. Oh, no. A Kiss for Luck doesn't have a stream today. It is our... She streamed before I did on Tuesday. Um, we're going to see you tomorrow for more Millennia. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone who, uh, who followed and subscribed and all that. And if you didn't follow, do do it so you get an announcement. Otherwise, the exclamation mark next stream in the chat... I've got a countdown timer for the next stream. Bye-bye.